Hi friends, happy Wednesday and welcome to my plant jungle. If you've been following along on our education sessions for the last month or so, you've probably noticed I've been having a little bit of fun putting all sorts of different plants in my background and curating a space that showcases some of my favorite plants. Uh, and I bring that up today for a reason. So I'm going to draw a little bit of a correlation to the product that we are going to talk about. So let me paint a little bit of a picture for you. So I'm a person I identify as really high self-preservation. And what that means for me is that I'm really particular about my environment. So I like to support my well-being with something like houseplants, for example, because they really support a number of different things. So there's research and studies that say houseplants are really good for our health. Not only do they help improve air quality, but they actually really help support our mental health. And they also help really set a tone for a space or to create an ambiance. And that's what I want to draw a correlation to today for the products that we're going to be discussing. Something else that I use to really support my wellness and to create a sense of happiness and fulfillment within my space which are diffusers and diffuser blends. So before we jump right into product I want to just take a quick moment to introduce myself. For those of you who may be joining for the first time my name is Kristen. I'm the National Educator here at SAGE. I've had the privilege and good fortune for the last five years of diving really deep into everything product and ingredient so that I can help bring that education to you, to your family, and to help support your wellness at home. So without further ado, let's jump into product and we're going to be talking today about diffusers. So this guy here, this is our Aroma Breeze in our matte black. I'm going to introduce a couple of different diffusers and diffuser blends throughout the session, but I really want to start right back at the beginning with diffuser basics. So this is something that I want to be really clear throughout this session. I really value relatability. I want to make this simple for you. I don't want any information to feel overwhelming because that's the opposite of the experience that we want you to have when it comes to having a diffuser and diffuser blends in your space. So starting back at the beginning, the inspiration for diffusers really comes to us from a medical grade technology that was introduced in hospitals and they were units called nebulizers. So how they worked and what they did essentially is they were used to support respiratory conditions. So say for example, a condition like asthma. And what they would do is they would take liquid medication, they would add it to a machine or to a unit, and it would then be created into a fine cool mist, which could be then administered directly to the lungs and to help support the respiratory condition. And it actually looked a bit like a mask where they had different units that they would use. And so that was the technology that really inspired something like an ultrasonic diffuser that we now use in our home for a number of different reasons. So today I want to talk about everything from the functionalities um, to the design and the aesthetic and most importantly to how you can use a diffuser in your space to feel awesome and to really achieve the results that you want to achieve with different essential oils. So let's go back to this unit here. So this one, like I said, our Aroma Breeze Matte Black. In the last five years, I've had the pleasure of working in almost every one of our stores across North America. And one of the questions that we hear so frequently is which diffuser is the best? So someone comes in, they take a look at our selection, all of the diffusers within our collection, and they seem a little stumped and they say, well, I don't know which one's the best. And so the simple answer that I always have for our community is that whichever diffuser you like the most, that one is the best. And there's a few reasons for that. The functionality, so how the actual diffuser operates, is almost the exact same across the board. So each one functions a little bit like this. We'll do a little live demo. So take a look in here. There's a bit of a glare, but you'll see in the middle here, there's something with a silver uh, edge, and that is the disc. So that itself is the ultrasonic vibrating disc. So each unit has one of these discs. They may look a little different, but what happens is you include two very simple ingredients. So clean, cool tap water and 100% pure essential oil diffuser blends. You put those into your tank and that disc vibrates at an ultrasonic speed and it then creates a fine cool mist which is dispersed into the air. So when I say functionality, that's what I mean that all diffusers are designed to do the same thing. The largest differences come in the aesthetics and that's why I always suggest to people that the best diffuser is the one you like the most. If you see a diffuser, for example, 
and you love the color or the shape uh, and the material is beautiful and you see that within your room, you picture that on your bedside table, you'd love to include that on the coffee table in your living room, that's going to be a unit that you're inclined to use often and that you're going to want to showcase proudly within your space. So some of those key aesthetic differences I want to talk about as well to help you understand the differences in diffuser. So we'll start with this unit and then move into another. So the Aroma Breeze Matte Black, this is one of my personal favorites. I think one of the reasons I love it the most is bang for your buck. So when I think about a diffuser of this size, its settings include a continuous run. So that means you put the water into the tank, you add your essential oils, you turn it on and it runs through until you turn off the machine or the tank empties. And this guy has about an eight to 10 hour run time. It's made of a soft touch BPA free plastic. And why that's important is BPA free plastic is non leaching. That means two different things. It means that the plastic itself won't leach into the water and then enter the mist. And it also means that the scent of the different essential oils will not stick to the plastic and then creating a bit of like a muddied environment within the diffuser. So almost all diffusers, their interior is made of that same plastic and then their exterior can be made of different material. Another one I want to introduce I have here, this is probably our most popular by aesthetic and this is called our Aroma Ohm. So this one, you see the cover, you can hear a little tap. This is made of a beautiful ceramic. It comes in a white, a black and a stone. So actually made from a nice cement. And this diffuser has a couple of different settings. So we mentioned the continuous run of the breeze and this one has a function called intermittent. This is really important in selecting a diffuser because many aromatherapists do recommend a unit with intermittent diffusing for certain circumstances. So what that means is that your unit can run for a certain period of time on and then off. So with this unit, for example, it has a 30 second on and 30 second off, which means that if you were to run it for a continuous period of time, it would average about three hours. And if you then put it into that intermittent setting, it would average about six, which makes sense again, just in the sense of 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Sometimes people love that setting specifically if they have children at home or if they have pets or if they just love to have a little bit of a lesser sensory experience in the sense that you would take that mist and you would extend it over a certain period of time and it would really extend the life versus sort of, you know, putting it all into the air at once. So those are some of the things that you can consider. Other features for sure in selecting diffusers lights. So this guy actually does have a light. I don't unfortunately have it plugged in here, but it has a really soft light pink here and a button that you can use with the light on or off. The Breeze actually has a light as well. And this one I do want to show you. I'm going to plug it in just to give you a little bit of an idea how it's going to work. So right now it doesn't have water in the tank, but I'm going to add some so we can show you. So this is something else I want you to think about when using your diffuser specifically related to functionality is how much water you add to the tank. So any of the diffusers will have an indicator for you in some way, whether it's a max fill line or it you know, indicates water level. This particular unit has a nice deep ridge within and that's the max fill line for water. That's important for a number of reasons. So when you replace your cap or your lid on any diffuser, if you've exceeded the water fill line, it often doesn't have enough space which in, uh, within rather the tank to create mist. And then what happens is your disc is sort of working over time. You'll often find your unit will heat up and that can cause malfunctioning of your motor. So really being mindful to always pay attention to that fill line in any of your diffusers is important. So this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna fill this right in midair. <laughs> we'll see how this is gonna work out. Got my water here. So you just add, like I said, your water directly to your tank. Then I'm gonna just replace this lid on here. And this one's a very simple one touch button. So this button right in the front, you turn on here. And then I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the mist, but I'll try and aim it for you there. And then something else you can't see too clearly just in the daylight, but it does actually have an LED light. So right through the middle here, along the center piece where the lid connects and through the top. So you can run it with the light on. If you press it the second time, the light would go off. And then the third time you press, the machine itself turns off entirely. 
So that's why, like I said, I mentioned that this is a really great introductory or a beginner diffuser, or even for people who are well advanced and love diffusing because it's super simple and easy to use. So I'm gonna put this one down for a moment. And so just so I can talk to you about the other guy. So then let's take our Roma Ohm, for example, and you'll see when you remove the lid here, the ceramic, it's actually quite a bit smaller inside than it looks. The lid can be a little bit deceiving. So here you have a secondary piece you pull off, then you would add your water and oil. And this one, see, has a line that actually says water level. So again, it gives you a very clear indicator of how much you would want to fill. So you would add your water, add your essential oil, replace both of your caps. And then how this one would work is just one touch of the button sends it into continuous, the second sends it into intermittent. A couple of the other things that I want to address, just making sure I'm not spilling things down here. Uh, something else I want to address just about runtime is you'll often hear approximates or estimates. So for example, with the breeze, we give an approximate eight to 10 hour runtime. And this often you know, presents questions for people to say, well, what would help determine that amount of time? Because that's a, a large gap, right? The two hours. So there are a number of factors that can really influence runtime for diffusers. And the simplest way to think about it is that anything that makes your diffuser work harder is going to shor shorten its duration, so its runtime. And some of those factors would include things like, for example, if you were diffusing with a window or a door open, it almost creates a bit of a vacuum. So it's pulling from the diffuser quicker and that can help it run through the tank a little bit faster. Other things would include carpeted homes or spaces. So carpets tend to hold things like dust or dander that might make your machine work a little harder. Any sort of airborne irritants, so things like smoke or even cooking odors and things that could tend to create a little bit more of a pull. So those are just some of the things to consider and why I wouldn't encourage you to be really specific or really, you know, hold it to an, a, an exact amount of time. And just thinking about the approximation is a little bit more valuable um, in really looking at the real time comparison. So those are some of the things to consider when you're thinking about choosing the units, using the units. Another thing I really like to sort of dissuade people in their decision making is regarding square footage. So some people can get really stuck on the idea of, you know, my room is this size, so I need a unit that covers this space. But again, there are so many factors that really can affect uh, how it fills a different space or a size of room. So those are more important to consider. For example, we'd always recommend keeping the diffuser closest to where you spend the most of your time. So for example, if you have an open concept living or dining room, I would encourage you to place your diffuser on uh, an end table or, or a coffee table, something close to the area where you spend more of your time. And then these other factors that we've mentioned as well. So if you think about an open window or door, the same would apply to really high ceilings or open concept space. So thinking more just specifically about a diffuser that you love and that you can use in close proximity, I think is a bit more effective as a strategy than really focusing on the size. But of course, in saying that, the size is what predicates runtime. So that's a very, very clear um, distinguisher as well in the unit. So the simplest way to say it, the larger your water tank, the longer your unit can run. So when you look at this one versus this one, for example, you saw when we removed the lid, this one only has, uh, the, the Aroma Ohm has the three hour runtime because the tank itself is actually quite small on continuous. And this one you see has a larger space and that's where you get the eight to 10. So when you're choosing a diffuser, think about that as well, the amount of time that you want it to run. So for example, you're working from home and you'd love to have a diffuser in your space throughout the day. You can look at the larger units that have anywhere from you know, eight to 10 hour run times all the way up to 22, almost 24 hours in some of our largest units. And then conversely, if you wanna choose a unit for a smaller space, say a home office, a bathroom, a guest bedroom, and you're really only looking just to provide a little bit of you know, refreshing and clearing for the air, you might choose one of the smaller units at lower run times between maybe three or six hours. So these are all things that we can help you with, be it in our stores or online through our uh, customer service team as well. Any of these type of questions we are more than happy to help with. So more than that, the next thing I wanna talk about is maintenance and just taking care of your diffuser to really extend its lifespan. And then we're gonna talk about the fun stuff, like why we would choose them, where we would use them in the home. 
So maintenance for a diffuser is incredibly easy, but incredibly important. So this guy here, I would just remove the lid again. Now there's water, so I have to be a little more careful. But you know what, I think we'll just empty. We'll empty the water out and that'll make it easier to explain. Okay, so in the bottom here, we've mentioned the disc and then your space. And the only things you're ever using within your diffuser are clean water and 100% pure essential oils. I'll say something just about that quickly. So you don't need to use any type of special water. So you don't need filtered, distilled. What's great about the units is they actually work with the natural minerals or sediment of tap water to detect within the tank. So that's really important because that means you don't have to have any, like I said, anything special or fancy, just clean, cool tap water. And then you wanna make sure you're using only 100% pure essential oil. So for example, if you have anything like this at home, any of our roll-on remedies, many of our products are formulated when topical, so ones that you put on your body, with a carrier oil. And carrier oils have higher viscosity. Viscosity means thickness. So think about things like uh, coconut oil or jojoba or grapeseed. Those wouldn't be great for your diffuser. The unit itself, that little disc, is ultra sensitive. So it can only break down particles that are very thin in viscosity, like essential oils and water. If you add carrier oils, you'll clog your disc and you can really run the risk of malfunctioning the unit. So let's stick to pure blends. And then in terms of cleaning, very, very simple, very easy, takes about 30 seconds, but super important. So what happens over time is different essential oils will create sediment within your tank. So oils that have higher resins, so things like cinnamon or frankincense, they can tend to leave a little bit of a film or a residue in the unit. So all you would do is take very simply something like rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. You add a little bit to your tank. I like to leave it just for a few moments. I love a Q-tip and then you just clean around. The disc is the important part that you wanna make sure you've removed all the sediment. And then a little bit of a rinse with water, being careful not to overflow or to flood the unit because that can enter into your um, air tank here in the back. So just a small amount of water, you give it a rinse out, a soft cloth or a paper towel and you're good to go. Something else I love, my personal favorite way to clean our diffusers, it's actually with the multi-clean. So if you know this product, this is from our home cleaning line. And there's a really scientific reason actually that this works well. It's the theory that like attracts like. So this is a natural home cleaning product that is blended with essential oils. So you have some lavender, some peppermint, rosemary. And then when you're thinking about residue or sediment in your tank, that's coming from essential oils as well. So when I say like attracts like, it means that the same things will help to remove the same things. Um, another great example, this is for people who work in the hair care industry, is for example, when you color and you dye your hair, hair dye will actually help remove hair dye from the skin. So you'll often see stylists will massage a little bit along the hairline or anywhere where there's been a staining with the remaining color in the hair to help pull it off the skin. So it works the same way here. So I just spritz really liberally inside. I like to let it sit for a minute or two. Again, take my Q-tip, my paper towel, roll it around and you're good to go. And that's the number one way that diffusers shorten their lifespan or that we see as malfunction. I can absolutely guarantee that within our stores, it's the number one reason for diffuser returns or malfunctions. And a lot of time you can just open the lid and you can make a good guesstimation there to say, yep, I think it's probably stopped functioning because there's just been a buildup of residue. Oftentimes it's a very simple fix. So keep that in mind um, to help yourself really extend the lifespan. A couple of quick safety features, things I wanna mention, is that it is an important distinction to clarify that ultrasonic diffusers create a cool mist and there is no heat or steam. There's a couple of reasons why that's really important. So number one is the, obviously the fire hazard. So there's no open flame, there's no coil, no type of heating mechanism at all. They're really simply just plugged into an electrical outlet and they all have auto shut off. I wanna just give you two clear distinctions between auto shut off on machines. So a unit like this one, the Aroma Breeze, it has what is known as a censored shut off. So that means that there's a sensor within the unit and when the tank can no longer sense a certain amount of water, the unit knows to automatically shut off. It knows at that point that it can no longer create the mist and so it's time for the unit to turn itself off until refilled. 
Another unit, for example, the aroma ohm, this has more of a timer mechanism. And what that means is internally in the unit, it's been programmed to turn off when it's reached a certain amount of time, whether or not there may still be a little bit of water in the tank. So that's really a good, um, a good determining factor as well. A lot of times people will say, my unit turns off and it still has a little bit of water, even sometimes up to a couple centimeters of water in the tank. And is that normal? The answer is totally yes. So this one, for example, if programmed to turn off at either three or six hours, depending on its continuous or intermittent setting, there may still be a measure of water left in the tank, but the unit itself knows to turn off. This is an important reason why there isn't risk, for example, of running your diffusers throughout the day because they have that intuition and that smart feature built into them to let them know when to turn off based either on water level or on time. The other reason why it's important to uh, delineate between like steam or any type of like hot mist versus cool mist is because of the science of how the unit works. So this is what I mean where I want to be really simple and just paint a clear picture that doesn't get too complicated. Picture yourself near open water. So say you're near an ocean, a lake or a river. Maybe you're in the forest and it's had a little bit of a rain shower. Maybe there was a thunderstorm in your yard. Anytime that water is in collision with anything, you tend to notice this is where you will experience deeper breathing. Or people, like I said, head to an open body of water and they kind of have a experience of just like breathing very clearly, really feeling happy, feeling positive. There's a reason for that. It's because water in collision creates negative ions. And negative ions are going to help remove positive ions from our breathing space. So positive ions, think of things like how can you say this? Really easy airborne irritants. So dust, maybe pet danders, any sort of pollens, like anything that can hang out in the air. So if this was in fact heat, think of it like this, heat rises. So if it was steam, it would push everything up out of your breathing space, and then eventually it would have to fall back through. But what happens with cool mist and the creation of negative ions, so I say here you have your positive ions hanging out in the air, this is your dust and danders. Here comes a negative ion, they attach to one another, and at this point, they become too heavy to stay airborne, so they fall out of your breathing space. And that's why you'll notice a lot of times uh, with your diffuser, say you have it placed on a bedside table or a coffee table, you'll notice this fine collection of dust accumulates around the diffuser, and that's really indicative that it's working. That's indicative that it has pulled you know, those, those irritants out of your breathing space, and then you know they've collected for removal. So that's a really important distinction around the idea of like why cool mist would be important and why you would want to make sure that you know someone would understand that there is no heat, there's no steam, no fire hazard, but also that health benefit included. So now that we've talked about all the functionalities, all the sort of science and the, the mumbo jumbos, I want to talk just about the fun. The fun stuff about having a diffuser, why you would choose to have one in your space. So we mentioned uh, number one important reason, aesthetic, something that's beautiful, that you enjoy, that fits into your decor, that really adds, you know, a bit of feng shui perhaps to your space. And then the other is to really tailor and personalize an experience. So I like to think about a diffuser as really supporting the way that you want to feel. So think, for example, we're working from home, you want to feel energized, you want to feel focused, you want to feel uplifted, you have the opportunity to choose essential oils that are known to support those physical feelings in the body. And then say on the other side of the spectrum, you want to use a diffuser to help you unwind and to you know, relax your body after a long day, perhaps you've had you know, racing mind, busy thoughts, you're experiencing some stress, you can choose essential oils that are known for their ability to induce sedation, relaxation, and create an atmosphere of peace. And that personalization is such an important experience when using an ultrasonic diffuser because you really have all the power in your hands. So say, for example, you're a person who really loves a really like vibrant, fragrant atmosphere. You want to open your door when you come home at night and you want to just have that experience of essential oils immediately. You can choose to add more oil to the tank. And then say on the other side of that, you love just a really gentle, light experience. You want to just have something very subtle within the background. You can tailor your experience in that way as well. I always say my personal mantra is that less is more because you can add, but you can't subtract. 
So sometimes it takes a little bit of, you know, playing around to discover how you want to have the experience within your home. And that's, I think, one of the main reasons to have a diffuser. So thinking, I think, of the three key ways, I think sort of like creating energy, creating relaxation, and using a diffuser for sleep are the three most important ways to consider where and how you'd use one in your home. So I know for myself personally, I think I've shared this a little bit jokingly before, but I have a beautiful one bedroom apartment here in Vancouver and I have eight different diffusers within my space. I'm not saying that you need eight necessarily, but I've definitely found uh, different ways to use all of them. And typically the most that I have running at once is four. four. I have um, like a, an open space concept and I use them in different ways. So just to go back actually briefly to the little plant jungle behind me, a number of plants with in um, homes require additional humidity. And so I actually have some strategically placed within say my tropicals or my cactuses and my succulents that they can actually add some gentle moisture to the air as well. I'm not always thinking about a sensory experience as much as I am about feeling awesome in my space. I've gotten accustomed over the years to the idea that having a diffuser on helps me breathe deeper. It makes me feel like I'm breathing clearer air. I enjoy the experience, the ambiance, like I said, that it creates. So you can really make those considerations for yourself as well. And the part that I really want to emphasize is using a diffuser for sleep. So long before I began my journey at Sage, it was actually recommended to me to try using a diffuser at bedtime. And if you had joined for our sleep session a few weeks ago, I had mentioned that I've never really been a problem sleeper. I've never really been afflicted. And so when I was having this experience, I was quite frustrated. And someone had made this suggestion to me, you know, had I tried a diffuser for sleep and I hadn't. <clears throat> Excuse me. So at this point in time, you know, I was curious. I went to just a health food store within my neighborhood. I got a really junky little unit for, you know, $15 or something, whatnot. But immediately I fell in love with the experience of how that diffuser made me feel. I immediately felt happier when I was going to bed. I felt my mind slow down and my thoughts weren't racing because I was tailoring the experience to what I wanted. So I chose essential oils that smelled good to me, thus making me feel happier. And they were oils that encouraged me to breathe deeper and to sleep well. I know a number of us at Sage, we've sort of shared the sentiment to say that at this point we're so attached to our diffusers for sleep that we would make concessions in other areas. So, you know, prior to the last few months, I used to travel quite regularly in my role. And I've joked a number of times that I would sacrifice a pair of shoes or an extra outfit or something of that nature to have a diffuser with me that I could take in my hotel rooms and again, create that experience of a bedtime routine at home. We know that we're creatures of habit, there's muscle memory and our bodies get used to something that we're you know, continuing to create patterns and rhythms of behaviors um, to experience. So I really can't say enough about it using a diffuser in that way. And as we've been working from home for the last few months, I've also become very regimented and really in a routine about how I use my diffusers in the daytime. So I wake up in the morning, I start, you know, boiling my kettle to make tea, and I just sort of check in with myself and how I want to feel. And I'll notice a lot on a bright sunny morning, I feel like citruses. And I love that uplifting, really fresh and clean scent that reminds me of spring. Sometimes on a rainier day, I'll choose something like a floral blend, something that gives me a little bit of balance. But I really enjoy just exploring the different ways to use diffusers related to my intuition and how I think I want to feel. So that's a whole lot. That was a whole big lot of information about diffusers. And as always, I want to encourage you to use the comment section, whether you have any feedback, you have any questions, any curiosities, I'm going to be jumping over to the comment section afterwards. And I really love being able to interact with you that way and help support you in using your product. So I feel like I've covered all of it, but if there's anything that I missed related, like I said, either to the functionality, the aesthetic, how, when, or why you would use a diffuser, make sure to comment um, and I'll be happy to answer that for you. And then next what I wanna do is just chat briefly about a couple of our brand new diffuser blend collections. And these are the different essential oil diffusers, diffuser blends rather that you can use um, within the units themselves. So the first one I wanna talk about, this little kit here, it's called Pick Me Up. So Pick Me Up is our invigorating diffuser blend collection. Work from home, that's what I think about immediately when I think of this, um, this kit. So pull off your lid, 
there's your little bottles there. Uh, for those of you, again, who maybe didn't join us for the sleep session, we had talked at that point about our Sweet Dreams collection. I love this updated box. So it now acts as a holder. You can just place this on you know, a, a table or a desk and it says the names of your blends as well so that you're never unsure. So I wanna chat through each of these with you, share a little bit about them. The first one is called Quick Study. So for our friends in the US, you'd know this product as Brainstorm. And Quick Study was formulated with a really nice, I don't know, this one, I never know exactly how to describe it. It's got a touch of citrus, a touch of herb, almost a little bit of something warming in there as well, which is the clove. This was formulated to increase mental alertness and to provide just sort of clarity. So quick study, you think immediately things like studying at school or you're working. It has an oil called myrtle and myrtle has been researched for its ability to help um, really provide mental acuity. It's been studied in some cool research studies regarding errors in assembly lines. So they would do a test, for example, diffusing myrtle in the air and then measuring the amount of errors that were reported for people who were or weren't using the oil. It also has clary sage. I've mentioned this oil in the past as a euphoric, so very powerful at supporting grounding the mind. And then a touch of citrus with your lemon and orange. The next one in the blend, I think this is the coolest name we have for a diffuser blend at Sage, it's called Mountain High. And Mountain High, even though it's in our invigorating and our energizing collection, I find to be very meditative. So as the name suggests Mountain High, you think about being in the forest outside, it has a number of trees, one from right here in Canada, our Balsam Canada, it has some cedar wood, some pine, and then a really nice surprising touch of spearmint. So it gives you that beautiful sort of forest experience, but just a touch of mint as well. And whenever I diffuse this one, I find myself, like I mentioned, just a little bit meditative or reflective, and I enjoy that experience of it. So that is Mountain High. The third in the collection also has a roll-on at Sage, and it's called Energy. So Energy, I think this one is really like the boost. Oh, I love it. I love the smell. The first note that I get is basil. Basil is really unique because it's an essential oil that isn't used in a lot of products, but it's very energizing to the body and mind. You also have lemon, rosemary, peppermint, all stimulants, all known to help give you a boost. So this one, like I mentioned, is available as a topical product that you can apply to the body, but in the air just again helps to wake you up in the morning. This is a great one first thing, maybe before a cup of coffee. And then last, and certainly not least in the collection, this is the newest blend to have joined the energizing um, set at Sage, and it's called Elevate. So Elevate is a nice citrus boost. This has lemon, it has lemongrass, which is really tangy, a little bit of zip, and then a cool essential oil called yuzu. So yuzu is a Japanese citrus fruit. Again, it's not widely used because it's not typically used to be eaten. It's really, really tart. So it's more specifically used for things like fragrance and then distillation as an essential oil. So this one I've been finding myself with that Elevate. I've been using that a lot lately and I actually like to add just one or two drops of 100% pure lemon just to give it an extra little zing and a boost. So this one, like I mentioned, is the perfect set to think about working at home, giving yourself a daytime boost. This is not your nighttime. This is not your blends for nighttime. Last week we talked about Sweet Dreams. This is the opposite. This is gonna give you everything you need to feel up and then something else to consider for going down into a state of unwind. And then the second collection I want to address today, this one's called Well Balanced. So this is a great sort of other side of the spectrum from energy. I wouldn't necessarily say this is for sleep. Some of the oils you may find that your body would really enjoy and would receive at bedtime, but this is more when you're thinking about unwinding after a long day, de-stressing, giving yourself just a bit of relaxation, creating a beautiful atmosphere. So this is well balanced. And then again, we remove, there's our blends. I'm really excited to talk about these. I love some of these ones here. So the first one in the collection is called Balance. And this is again one of the newer blends just joined our collection last year. So there's Geranium, which is a nice hormone balancer, Frankincense and Sandalwood. So this one I think of a touch of floral, but then some woodsy as well to really help ground the system. It's called a centering diffuser blend and I think that's a really apt description. 
Some people really love geranium in their meditation practice or in anything in which they're looking to bring balance to the body because it is so harmonizing and just sort of recentering any energies that feel a little bit off. So that's your first one, balance. The second one, I think this is my favorite within the collection, it's called Bliss. Bliss also just joined our collection last year and this is a lovely, lovely blend of citrus floral. So here you have like some orange and some grapefruit, but you also have rose geranium and my favorite oil to talk about for its preciousness, which is rose. So this one I just find gives me this like beautiful feeling of peace. This is a blend I actually do use for sleep. I have found this one really speaks well to my system. And I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but here's a little spoiler alert, is that this coming Friday, we're gonna launch a really cool limited edition product that is in some way tied to our Bliss blend. So I won't say more than that. You gotta keep your eyes on sage.com on this Friday, but there's gonna be something cool related to that Bliss product. The third one, this is an original we've had in our collection for a very, very long time. It's called Goddess. And Goddess is all of your precious florals. So think rose, jasmine, neroli. It's a very ritzy blend. A little bit of champa flower in there as well. And this is your true florals. So for that person who loves the experience of like closing their eyes and thinking of themselves in a beautiful, you know, field filled with flowers or sticking your head into a fresh bouquet, this is the experience that is mimicked there. There's also orange, and I found it interesting over the years that people will say they experience more or less of the orange through scent, depending on where they're sort of at. If they're feeling like they need a little bit more of a lift or a mood boost, they may sense a bit more of the orange, and otherwise the floral is sort of the dominant note. So I really need one last little sniff. I encourage you to check this one out as well. And then the final within this little foursome here is another original for us at Sage, and it's called Yoga. So yoga is definitely a grounding blend. As the name implies, I would think of using this blend for something like your yoga practice, your meditation practice, any sort of spiritual use. This is a very rich and earthy blend. It has some champa flowers. Another uh, well-known ingredient is patchouli. Patchouli has a great reputation for being used uh, in spirituality, as well as a little bit of orange and some neroli. So that's where you get a touch of the floral. And I want to just make a quick note here when thinking about these blends, back to the idea of what we talked about personalizing an experience. So in my experience, what happens is you'll get a feel for how much or how little you like to use of certain essential oils. And a lot of times it has to do with the blend itself. So yoga is a great example. This is a very rich, very earthy blend. My experience is that I only need a few drops to really enjoy the experience. I'll share a funny little story actually. One time I was in St. John's, Newfoundland. Shout out to our friends at Avalon Mall. This was my very first store that I was opening with Sage. This was the fall of 2015 and I was trying new blends and you know discovering new things. So we were going to go out for a beautiful walk, a nice beautiful hike and I had decided to turn on yoga in the diffuser in my hotel room because I wanted to come back and have you know that beautiful sensory experience. So I had no idea how much of this blend I should use. The machine was pretty large, you know, the hotel room is, is fairly large as well. So I think I put about 20 or 25 drops, a really large amount of oil. So I go out, you know, I come back and it's gotta be at least three or four hours later and I'm walking down the hall in my hotel and all I can smell is yoga diffuser blend. It is blasting through the doors, blasting out of the space, blasting out of the room. And I learned really quickly that this wasn't a blend that you needed to use that much because there's so much richness and depth within the oils that you could you know, start at three or four drops. Whereas, for example, when I go back to Elevate in the Pick Me Up collection, having more of those bright top notes and citrus notes, I find that I can use a little bit more and it'll evaporate off quicker and it doesn't last and linger so long in the air. So let that be part of the fun as well. Enjoy getting to know your blends, figuring out how much you like, how little you know you wanna add. Really experiment and always start on that smaller side, like I said, because that gives you the chance to add more if you wanna have a more fragrant experience. So those are the two kits as well. I think we launched 
six or seven, six, don't quote me, six or seven different diffuser blend kits. And the reason that we really love the kits is they give you a great opportunity to try different oils, whether they're new to you or you're experimenting or you're trying to find some new blends that you might like. It takes a bit of that guesswork out. And I encourage this last time as well to say, keep an open mind and really try them in the air versus just making a decision by smelling the bottle. My experience tells me that the way the different oils blend within, you know, just the natural fragrance in your home and once they're in the air and they're sort of in synergy with one another can be really different than the experience in the bottle. And you might end up finding some new favorites or something that you didn't know you were gonna love. All right, so that's it. That's gonna take us to the end of this week's product education. As always, back to that comment section, let me know anything I can help you with or give you more information on. A quick shout out that I want to make for a session we are hosting this Friday. So Friday, May 22nd, our incredible in-house aromatherapist, her name is Lynette, is hosting a session on stress. So she's going to talk all about different ways that you can manage stress within your life, within your wellness routine, different products you can use, answering some questions from our community. So make sure to tune in there. And then next week, we are going to be back same time, same date. So next Wednesday, I believe May 27th. And I'm going to be talking about two of our brand new remedial kits. So we launched again a full collection of kits that are for topical use. I'm not going to spoil it and tell you which two we're talking about, but that's going to be again next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific. So thank you, my friends. I enjoy being able to chat with you each week about products I love, helping answer some questions, maybe helping you find some new products to love. I want to thank you for taking your time, spending your time with us. Stay safe, have a really great rest of your week, and take care. Bye, everyone.